Members are expected to vote this weekend on multiple foreign aid bills that Republican leadership just rolled out. Now, that's right, but Speaker Mike Johnson is facing threats from members of his own party to oust him. The legislation would provide more than $95 billion in aid for Israel, Ukraine, and partners in the Indo-Pacific. But many House conservatives strongly oppose additional funding to Ukraine in particular. Speaker Johnson explained why he's pushing these bills forward, even though it may cost him his job. If I operated uh, out of fear over a motion to vacate, I would never be able to do my job. I, look, history judges us for what we do. This is a critical time right now, a critical time on the world stage. I, I could make a... You know, I could make a selfish decision and, and, and do something that, um, th that, that's different, but I, I'm doing here what I believe to be the right thing. This is not a game. It's not a joke. We can't play politics of this. We have to do the right thing. And, and I'm going to allow an opportunity for every single member of the House to vote their conscience and their will on this. And I think that's the way this institution is supposed to work. And I'm willing to take personal risk for that because we have to do the right thing, and history will judge us. President Biden also announced yesterday that he would sign these bills into law if they pass both the House and the Senate. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane has more on this for us from Capitol Hill. Scott, during yesterday's impeachment trial in the Senate, we actually spoke about the risk Speaker Johnson faces by splitting up this legislation. Explain uh, in detail today why doing that may eventually um, lead him out of his position. Errol, he is walking on an Olympic balance beam right now. It's real narrow, and he's trying not to get pushed from the right or the left, even gently, to avoid falling off and bringing this Ukraine-Israel aid package down to the mat with him. I spoke to a number of House Democrats just before joining you as the afternoon began here in Washington, and i got to tell you, they are bullish on the prospects of this thing getting a lot of Democratic votes. Even the progressives who have had a lot of heartburn and a lot of disagreements over Israel funding with concerns there's not enough humanitarian aid still have those concerns. But at least one of them, Mark Pocan of Wisconsin, said to get Ukraine money through, he might be willing to support all of what's on the table here. And it is all on the table, as you see, 26 billion for Israel, 61 billion for Ukraine, money for the Indo-Pacific and those other proposals in that fourth bill, including a possible bill to require a sale or ban of TikTok. All of that, though, is in bite-sized portions, Errol and Lana. They'll all be put up for a vote individually. The House Speaker thinks there's some way of threading a needle here by having them all silo. There are dozens of his House Republicans who do not want to fund Ukraine, who are vitriolic in their denunciations of more money for Ukraine, but he thinks he can kind of coast through by having each vote individually to start. But at some point at the end, Errol and Lana, they're going to have to weave this all together into what they call a rule vote here. And that's where we might see Democrats getting this past the threshold for the speaker, which does nothing to protect the speaker from his fellow Republicans trying to oust him. Scott, uh, I think that there's 218 Republicans in the House right now. Uh, you're saying that there's dozens that are opposed to the Ukraine aid bill, and there's only two House Republicans that at least publicly have voiced their support for ousting Johnson as Speaker. Remind our viewers why they, this outsized minority is having such an influence in U.S. foreign policy. This is the reason uh, why Speaker Mike Johnson is trying to continually get things passed with Democrats pushing it through because he has this faction in his Republican conference which toes a hard line on so many things he can't get a majority without getting the Democrats on board. And to get the Democrats on board, you have to offer something they really like. So you end up getting a lot of Democrats on board. The woman on the left, Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, is the one leading this effort with only one person joining her, Thomas Massey of Kentucky, to force a vote to oust the speaker. The second time that would have happened since October. Her concern is the speaker's cutting too many deals with Democrats. Her other concern is funding for Ukraine. Mike Johnson is setting the stage this week and this weekend for a big deal with Democrats that funds Ukraine. So Congresswoman Green continues to argue that it's not just her and not just Mr. Massey, but there's a critical mass forming, she says, of Republicans who would join her effort to oust Johnson because of all this. So who gets the power in that situation? It would be the Democrats again. Do they want to save Mike Johnson? They have the votes to do so. Or do they never want to save a Republican speaker? They'll get to decide, but I can tell you CBS News here today has interviewed in multiple House Democrats who say they would intervene to save Mike Johnson from this breakaway coalition of Republicans who they don't trust and in the name of funding Ukraine.
But Scott, that tightrope you say Mike Johnson is walking is the same identical balance that Kevin McCarthy had as House Speaker. He didn't want to listen to the far right of his party. He had to agree with some Democrats in order to keep the government funded. So that said, if what's the likelihood these bills will pass this weekend, despite all the divisions we're speaking about? Again, if the Democrats provide their muscle and their legislative support, they'll coast right through these bills and they'll coast through with the type of majority that may make them look not just bipartisan, but may inoculate them from some of the parliamentary procedure hurdles that the Freedom Caucus can throw up. Let's put that aside. There's a difference between October 2023 and Kevin McCarthy in modern times. We are closer to the election. Republicans may be less inclined to have upheaval and chaos this close to an election. What's more, in October, some of those Republicans may have envisioned a better way, a better path, a better speaker. There's no alternate name circulating as who wants this job or who would be better at this point. Who would want this job? It's part elementary school teacher, part disciplinarian, part legislator, and part politician. There may be nobody who can wear all four of those hats at once. Man, it's fascinating to watch. <laughs> Scott McFarlane, thanks for walking us through all of it. Tight ropes and all.